Now, our final speaker for the affirmative is a familiar face to many, having been a prominent figure in Queensland politics, and most famously, our first and only female Attorney General. Yeah, you go, girl. These days, she is the director of the Australian Cervical Cancer Foundation, as well as being the chair of the Not-for-Profit Sector Reform Council, and also the chair of the Ethics Committee of the Fundraising Institute of Australia. In her spare time, she likes... Well, <laughs> you don't have any spare time, do you, sweetheart? No, her spare time is called sleeping, folks. Please welcome the very busy and very important Linda Lavarch. That's better. Now let's blow the whistle on the negative team's argument. The gap is just a state of mind, I think is what you were trying to tell us in that long-winded way. <laughs> Women can be whatever they want to be. It's their choice. I think in there they were also wrapping that up into that the gap is actually a myth. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Kimberly, first speaker for the ne negative, works in television. It's Channel 7, right? How many television network executives in Australia are women? There's a special prize if you get this right. <laughs> now, I checked the stats for Seven West Media, the owner of Channel 7. Their board has nine directors. How many of those directors are women? You're right, one. One. Seven West Media is a conglomerate. It has ten components to this listed company. How many CEOs out of the ten separate organisations with Seven West Media are women. Zero. Not a one. Now, do you think that women have consciously chosen not to seek a senior executive position with your network, Kimberly? Do you think women in TV can have any position they choose? Do you think that this happened not because there was a gap, but because they weren't open-minded enough, perhaps? Do you seriously want to tell us that there is only one woman in Australia that wants to be in the leadership team of Seven West Media? Now, don't get me started on Fairfax. <laughs> and it's not just this board. Where are the other women on the ASX boards? Especially the one third of the ASX 200 boards that have no female directors whatsoever. Now, I just can't wait to read their diversity report. <laughs> Churchy, Brisbane Boys Grammar, Terrace. And CEOs, seven, seven in that group. Now, I was in the Qantas Business Lounge the other day and picked up the latest edition of the CEO magazine. We've all got this one. You know what I like about the CEO magazine? They did nine profiles of CEOs across Australia. They don't even bother to worry about tokenism. Or blokes. Or blokes. But they did have this lovely little article about the gender diversity. Well recommend reading it, girls. Now, second speaker for the negative, Karen, I mean, Julia, I mean, Karen, hmm. Well, if it's Julia, then can I say it's an honour to be here on stage with our first female PM. We now have the trifecta, a woman head of state, the Queen. You know, Alan Jones, when he was said we were destroying the joint, as a monarchist, did he include the Queen too? Hmm. We have a, our first woman Governor-General and a woman Prime Minister. Now, for the Governor-General and the Prime Minister here in Australia, these are milestones. They mark the journey. 
They are not the end of the journey. Now, Julia's experience still demonstrates that there are barriers for successful women. When you complain about sex discrimination in the workplace, they slap down that gender card on your smackdown. But I must say, coming from politics, the gender gap in political terms actually is measured differently to the corporate world. It's measured in voting intentions. Just ask Margaret Abbott. Now you may think mind the gap is just an OHS advisory message on the London tube and has no relevance, but it does. And why do they have that on the continuous loop on the tube? It is asking you to pay attention. And surely by now, as you have traveled with us on the MTG Express, the scales have fallen from your eyes. Francis, our conductor, has driven home. This is a journey that will take you so far, but no further. Yes, we've come a long way. But outbursts, like they are destroying the joint, remind us of how, how far we still have to go to overcome age-old perceptions and stereotypes. France has invited you to share your battle stories. And I could tell a few, but not in public, of course. And what about the unconscious bias, the social world of male execs that sidelines or derails us without obvious intent? Raylene has tracked the route and the stations where the gaps can become whistle stops and journeys end. The mummy track, the pay gap, the perception gap. She's dazzled you with facts. They do not lie. The data is indisputable. We've looked at the gap, we've measured the gap, we admit the gap. We have the courage to admit the gap. And if you have stepped over the gap, then good on you, congratulations, well done. But more importantly, please mind the gap for all those who are coming through the ranks. You can make the difference. And if none of this convinces you at all, it's just good economics. It makes sense. If you worship at the altar of the, of the market world, then apply the good economics to it. Credit Suisse research shows companies with female directors do better in challenging markets than without. Another survey finds that companies with at least one female director are 38% less likely to have, a, to have to restate their financial performance figures to correct errors than a company with an all-male board. So as you step aboard the MTG Express in your Jimmy Choo's, remember to help other women to get on the stations along the way. Not only will you be helping all women to mind the gap, it will be a much more pleasant journey. Happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Please mind the gap. Please mind the gap.